News Channel 8 presents New Skills for Living with your host, Tom Lavin, a healthy plan for healthy living. Hello and welcome to New Skills for Living, a show dedicated to healing and wholeness in our community. We've got a really good show today. In the second part of our show, the last two segments, we're going to be talking with Rosalind Reynolds uh, from Adult Mental Health Services about mental health issues and recovery. However, in our first two segments, we're going to be talking about what the Washoe County School District counselors are doing to help students stay on track with graduation. Uh, our guest is Kelly Jesh, who is the program coordinator of the school district school counseling program. And Kelly, it's great to have you here as a guest. Thank you for Thanks. coming today. Thanks for having me. So Kelly, can you just step right in and let us know, what are you guys doing to help students stay on track to graduate? Well, I think school counseling is a really important way to help um, identify students in the school district who are starting to have issues around um, completing their coursework to graduate. That is our number one goal, is to make sure that students graduate college and career mm -hmm. ready. Um, counselors use data in a lot of different ways, gather data to find out who's on, on track for succeeding and, and who's not. Um, mm -hmm. So they're analyzing transcripts, they're using our databases to make sure that they know who students are and mm -hmm. be able to design interventions to, to make sure that they get back on track right yeah. away. So. so Kelly, when you were talking about interventions, what type of interventions then do the school counselors do? I guess with students and parents and faculty, and, but what are the interventions? Well, um, interventions look different depending on the student. Mm -hmm. There are school-based interventions that can help us before a student becomes credit deficient. We want to be able to adjust curriculum or change mm -hmm. classes, do what we need to do to design um, education to meet the student's needs at school. Mm -hmm. But once a student is credit deficient, has fallen behind in his or her credits to graduate, then a variety of other needs, uh, services need to kick in to, to help catch the student up. Um, mm -hmm. That can be a short-term fix or it might have to be a long-term fix um, for students, but um, each student has their own needs and we have to um, take a look at those needs and decide what's appropriate. Yeah. So I guess the, the primary reason for deficiency is that someone didn't get enough credits in their freshman or sophomore or junior year, or maybe they're seniors and they're having a hard time passing right. the classes that are right. necessary. Right. Um, please, go ahead. Uh, every student has their own target or goal about what they want to do um, through, through high school. Um, obviously, they come into high school with a certain skill set, and when that skill set isn't matched with the coursework. Sometimes students have difficulty um, and may not necessarily know how to ask for help, mm -hmm. um, may not have the support that they need, um, and therefore may you know, drop a class or fail a class uh, or stop attending. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, they won't get a credit. Um, even, even if they go to class and pass the class, they might get a credit. Yeah. So, um, so there are lots of reasons why kids might not end up getting a credit for a class. And so are you and the counselors like right off right out of the bat like freshman and sophomore year already talking with the students and their parents about you're falling behind in your credits here and you need to or do you kind of wait till junior and senior year? Or? Oh no, um, we have um, many of our schools dedicate a counselor to the freshman class. Uh -huh. So we have a counselor that her his or her whole goal is to keep freshmen on track. Some mm -hmm. schools also have added support, gear up counselors who, um, who keep track of counselors or of students and, and, and follow them through that first year doing everything they can mm -hmm. to make sure that they're on track, mm -hmm. particularly at the at-risk population. Um, but um, we know that that first year of the transition from middle school to high school is really important yeah. because once behind, it's really hard to catch up. So we do everything we can in that first year to keep sure, make sure that counselors yeah. or students stay on track. And I kind of got the idea, please correct me if I, if I got the wrong idea, but that maybe you listen to what a student's goals are, what, what they want to do mm -hmm. after they graduate from high right. school and you help design the curriculum, mm -hmm. but then there's also a matter of skill set and what skills mm -hmm. does the student have or what do they need to 
graduate, but then also head off in the direction. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, how you guys do that? Well, every student um, in Washoe County School District develops a four-year plan. Mm -hmm. So the, that freshman counselor will come in, work with the student to say, you know, what do you want to do? What are your plans? What goals do you have? Um, and, and some come in with those plans well-developed and others don't. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the school counselor's job to expose them to different opportunities and allow them to work through that process until they have come up with a goal. Um, then once, a, once a, a counselor has an idea about where a student wants to go, then they begin to plug classes in, um, whether it's a science-based or it's a literature-based um, yeah. goal that would allow them to, to be ready when, when they move, move into that ar arena. That, that sounds really great. That's some great information. And right after this brief break, we're going to continue to explore what the Washoe County School Counselors are doing to help students graduate. Hello and welcome back to New Skills for Living. We're talking with Kelly Jess with Washoe County School District uh, School Counselors. So Kelly, when a child does fall behind, how do you help them catch up? Well, there are a lot of varieties of, of uh, uh, programs that are available for students once they have fallen behind. Um, Washoe County School District is going to offer summer school the summer to middle and high school students. There won't be any elementary um, uh, summer school unfortunately this summer but middle school counselors will have an opportunity to to work on a program called Plato that that um, helps them with some skill deficiency and gets those credits earned to get out of middle school and then high school um, counselors um, summer school will be for classes that are uh, the core classes, the mm -hmm. ones that they need to graduate. Um, and most of those students are going to be the ones that have you know lost that along the way um, mm -hmm. have either either failed the class or missed it in some way so. okay and then also there's a program that I've heard about it's called the wolf program now is that a program that helps students catch up or I know it helps them in some way how does it yeah w the wolf program is a really great program for students who are very self-motivated mm -hmm. um, uh, Washoe online learning for the future I think oh, okay. that that's what uh -huh. the wolf stands uh -huh. for yeah. um, it is a rigorous uh, curriculum mm -hmm. it's online uh, for for any student um, in the high school to take a, a course I think there's also eighth grade curriculum um, but it really is coursework for students who have the skills mm -hmm. are self-motivated mm -hmm. Um, and are willing to really stick with it and follow it all the way through. It's not necessarily an easy class. Sometimes kids say, I'm just going to take Wolf and get an, you know, an easy yeah, A. It's yeah. not an easy A. It's yeah. a rigor rigorous class. Um, oh, that's great. But, but it is a good opportunity for yeah. students who either want to recover a, a, yeah. a, a course that they lost or to accelerate. Yeah, that sounds great. I bet mm -hmm. the students are responding to that mm -hmm. pretty strongly. They, they are, positively. absolutely. That's great. I'm glad we're doing that mm -hmm. here in Washoe County. Well, you know, Kelly, one of the things that frequently comes up is that people don't exactly know everything that a school counselor does. Like, mm -hmm. So if people are watching our show and they go, gosh, I'd like my, I'd like my student and, and our family to engage with a school counselor to mm -hmm. help our child out, um, how do they access school counselors and how, what are the different ways that you guys help students and their families? Well, that's a, that's a really broad question, uh -huh. but um, students uh, can access school counselors at any time at their schools. Every Washoe okay. County School District school has one or more school counselors. Uh, the high school often have teams of five, six, and even seven school counselors, depending on the size of the school. Um, school counselors are there really to promote the, the academic, personal, social, or career goals of students. Mm -hmm. And uh, they work closely with staff, collaborate with the community, with parents, to make sure schools um, meet the needs of students to make mm -hmm. them successful. Mm -hmm. So you guys have a really holistic approach then. You, it's Absolutely. academic, but it's also the whole person of the student. And Helping Absolutely. them develop as human beings. Huh? Sure, sure. We know that that all three are important to student success. Um, yeah. That one can't survive without the other. So, um, in the elementary, we focus on more personal, and social, as we're developing those little guys mm -hmm. to to be able to move forward in the world. And as they are able to develop uh, those skills, then academics 
become more the focus. We do all mm -hmm. three in all levels, but the shift as we move into middle and high school is getting them career and college ready. That, that is some great news. I'm really mm -hmm. glad to hear that you guys are doing that and, and helping people out in our community in that way. Absolutely. Um, Kelly, we have about a half a minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there are parents, family members, students that are watching the show, and they're concerned about catching up, they're concerned about graduation, um, what's one thing that you would share with them as we're closing out today? Well, we need to know that, that a, a child who is successful in graduating from high school, that those skills really start in kindergarten. So mm -hmm. a parent taking education seriously from the beginning, making sure that they stay connected with their school, their school counselor and their teacher being a very important part of that, um, and making sure that they follow through with that communication. Okay. Well, uh, we're really grateful that Kelly came and shared with us what our Washoe County School District counselors are doing to help our children out. Kelly, thank you so much for coming. You're very welcome. And after this brief break, we're going to talk with Rosalind Reynolds about adult mental health services. Hello and welcome back to New Skills for Living. We're talking with Rosalind Reynolds, who is the agency director of Northern Nevada Adult Mental Health Services. Roz is a master, master's prepared psychiatric nurse and she also holds an MBA. Um, we're going to be talking today about how people can and do recover from mental illness. And Roz, I guess the first thing I want to mention to you is there is the stigma of mental illness, but every day you see people who are in recovery, they are changing their lives. Right. Can you talk with us about that, please? I'd be happy to. It's nice to be here with you again, Yeah, Tom. Roz, great to have you back. Um, as you and I both know, um, probably one in four people in our country have some sort of mental or emotional difficulty. And in the work we do at NAMS, we see people engaged in treatment and recovery and achieving success every day. Um, you don't do that without help. And of course, the first step is to ask for it, to yeah. avail yourself of it, uh, to know where to go. Yeah. Um, but, and, and often people think, geez, I, I just don't want to let anyone know I have depression or I've not been feeling myself or I'm having these sort of odd experiences. But it's just like any other illness that you might need treatment for. Mm -hmm. And you need to go to your health professional mm -hmm. and find out about it. Um, often we talk about medication being uh, a primary treatment, but that is by far not the whole picture. It really takes a comprehensive approach um, to learning skills, learning to uh, learning about your illness and your medication, mm -hmm. certainly, but learning how to relate to other people, learning how to regain the roles you've had in mm -hmm. your life, to mm -hmm. parenting, being a spouse, being a member of the community, being a neighbor, being an uh, em employee, yes. holding a job. You have to sometimes relearn some of those things. Yes, and, and sometimes people will say in recovery, they'll say, I uh, they'll talk about having their mental illness, but not mm -hmm. their mental illness not having them. Exactly. But that's not their whole entire life. Right. That, it's it's one thing about them. It's not yeah. who the person is. Yeah. And recovering who you are as a person is the most important. Yes. And and this kind of brings up another thing. It kind of goes back to stigma that so mm -hmm. frequently the stigmatized mental illness person right. is looked at as weak, but mm -hmm. actually... Roz, you, you frequently mm -hmm. will talk about how strong people are. Right. When they, can you talk with us about the absolutely. strength of someone in recovery? Oh, absolutely. It's, if you stop and think about it, um, you know, I might whine because I, I have got aching joints or something, but when you stop to think about someone who has a, a major mental illness affecting their brain, which affects the way you perceive the world, the way you interact with the world, and you have to learn about that and, and get in control of it, then you have to deal with the fact that you might have been unemployed for quite a while, so you're living in poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to deal with the stigma of people knowing about your illness and perhaps discriminating against you. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people lose friends and family members because they're afraid. Mm -hmm. um, so you suffer a lot of loss mm -hmm. and grief. Mm -hmm. um, and people overcome that and recover their, their sense of their selves and mm -hmm. their lives. Um, that takes a lot of courage. Yeah, as you describe that, and, and we stop and think about a human being that mm -hmm. for whatever biogenetic reason and right. whatever life stresses intervene on them, 
right. in their life that they right. had a major depression or they had post-traumatic stress right. disorder or bipolar or maybe substance abuse along with that. Right. And they were dragged down so far, but then to hear you talk about the right. strength that it takes for them to right. pick themselves up right. and create a new life to recover their life, right. huh, Ross? And people do it every day. Yes, yes, so. but frequently, we, we don't know that. We tend to think that mm -hmm. people don't get into recovery, Right. that frequently the time and energy money spent is mm -hmm. a waste of time and energy and money. Right. But of course, in the work that you do, you know that it's not. It's an investment, yes. yes. I, I always like to recall um, Officer O'Brien from uh, our local CIT program uh, tried to calculate one day just on a napkin at lunch uh -huh. uh, one, one person that he had been involved with over a period mm -hmm. of a year uh, who had sort of lost himself to his mental illness and to alcohol and he would be picked up and taken to the ER and then to the jail and then back mm -hmm. out. Um, which was costing roughly a million dollars. Yes. And uh, he put it on, on the website and it got picked up by Malcolm Gladwell who wrote an article about it, called uh -huh. it Million Dollar Murray. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, Murray recovered just with the support of uh, Officer O'Brien, Officer Johns, who uh -huh. checked in with him and uh, provided some social services and got him into treatment. And we saw before and after pictures and you wouldn't have realized it was the same man. Yeah. Um, so with just support and someone being willing to uh, engage in treatment and recovery, it makes all the difference. And Mr. Gladwell made the point at the end of his article that uh, we could have bought him a condominium and given him a 24-hour nurse and spent less money than we did <laughs> the, <laughs> when we were just doing the cycle. Yes. So it's an investment and it does save money, but it's, it's always hard to show uh, things that didn't happen. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, but the investment in the humanity is really worth it, too. It sure is, Ros. And, and so that's some good news hearing this with Rosalind Reynolds. And after this brief break, we're going to uh, explore further these important themes about recovery. Hello, and welcome back to New Skills for Living. We're talking with Rosalind Reynolds, the agency director at Northern Nevada Adult Mental Health Services about recovery. Um, so Roz, there is data out there that shows that someone with a mental illness, if mm -hmm. it's not treated appropriately mm -hmm. or it goes untreated, that mm -hmm. it will take 25 years mm -hmm. off of their life. Can you talk mm -hmm. with us about the mm -hmm. personal, family, and social cost? Sure. sure. I, I wish I could quote that research, um, but it's fairly recent research uh, that shows that that folks with mental illness, um, especially without enough mm -hmm. support and treatment, uh, have lost as much of, as 25 years off their mm -hmm. lives, that they tend to die early. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the uh, calculation is, or the uh, guess is, that that's a lot due to the stress involved, um, both physically and mentally, mm -hmm. um, from having that kind of an illness without enough support. Yes. Um, but if you stop and think about uh, the cost in health care uh, that that begins to run up and then the loss of the the human capital yes. uh, of the things that folks could accomplish if they were in treatment and able to get back to work and able to be students and yes. able to be members of their family. Yes. Um, we often encounter people who have lost over the years their family and uh, we've had the experience of reuniting those families, mm -hmm. um, and that's incalculable. Yes, that so. is, that, that's, that's wonderful for the human yeah. being and for society. And then, of course, the other thing, you getting back to the idea of support, at mm -hmm. Northern Nevada Adult Mental Health Services, mm -hmm. there are an array of services that right. help people in so many different ways. Can you right. remind us of what those are, please? Sure, sure. Um, as you know, we have the acute care hospital. Um, which is for folks who really need to be inpatient and need to be kept safe while they're uh, getting back into treatment. And that's usually a very short stay, uh, nine to 10 days. Um, and then we have a whole array of outpatient mm -hmm. services that uh, are continuous with the hospital and uh, integrated so that they work together mm -hmm. um, and designed specifically for each uh, consumer depending on what they need. Um, they don't all need all of those services. Mm -hmm. um, 
someone might need a service coordinator to help them sort of traverse the, the various systems they have to mm -hmm. deal with. Um, there's certainly the medication clinic where there are nurses and doctors to help with uh, diagnosis and coordinating their total health care uh, along with managing medication and educating folks mm -hmm. about their medication. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, there's the co-occurring disorders mm -hmm. program uh, that's once again integrated with the rest of their treatment at mm -hmm. NAMS for those who have a substance abuse disorder. Um, it takes an educational uh, approach where relapse is mm -hmm. a part of the learning process mm -hmm. uh, and try to reduce harm in people's lives uh, until they get to the place where they mm -hmm. really can tackle being abstinent and, and in recovery. Um, we have a um, specialized program with the district court called Mental Health Court, mm -hmm. uh, which is a service coordination program along with uh, the nurse and doctor support as well. Um, that helps people, instead of going to jail, get into treatment. Yes. Um, and they tend to graduate after a year and have achieved their recovery and uh, gotten stabilized again. So mm -hmm. we have a very large housing program that is full. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to encourage people to come apply for housing because there isn't any. Mm -hmm. um, but having basic needs available in terms of housing and uh, entitlements and being able to get food, those are yeah. also provided there. And those are some great comprehensive services that mm -hmm. uh, under Roz's direction at NAMS have really expanded to help so many people. Mm -hmm. uh, they've also won a wonderful award for safety at the uh, hospital. Roz, we can't thank you enough for coming back thank and being you, on Tom. the show again and informing our community it's of these nice services. Hopefully up on your screen you'll see the website where you'll be able to view this show. Um, uh, if you'll go to the website, the show should be available in a couple of months. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next month where we continue to explore important issues in mental health, community health, and health care in general.